Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Brian Kemmler. I'm a product manager, and I work on Android accessibility. Hi, and I'm Ricardo Garcia, a software engineer in the audio framework team in Android. How's everybody's last day of I.O.? Last, last session, woo! You made it through. Thank you so much for coming out. It was a great I.O. Um, today, we have a lot of really exciting things to talk about. Uh, primarily geared for developers. Uh, we're going to be talking about a new sound enhancement feature in Android P called Sound Amplifier. We're going to be doing a little bit of a live demo to show how we can improve the sound in any type of situation for users and how you can do the same as a developer. We're going to go and do a deep dive into the inner workings of Sound Amplifier and the dynamics processing effect upon which it's built, live with code examples. So it's going to be really cool. Let's dive right in. Listening is difficult, even in an empty field with a massive set of ears. But the everyday reality is we live, work, and play with an increasing amount of environmental noise. In fact, unwanted sound is one of the most common environmental problems. It's not only annoying, but it prevents us from understanding our friends, colleagues, and loved ones. No matter how well we can hear, most of us can relate to the following acoustically challenging situations. Trying to understand your date in a loud restaurant or a loud bar. Trying to listen to a caller in a really loud airport lounge. Trying to listen to a speaker who's talking way too softly, like me now. One could think of environmental noise as a form of situational disability. But what if you could hear better using just your smartphone so you'd never miss a word in the conversation. Now you can, because today we're introducing Sound Amplifier. What is Sound Amplifier? Sound Amplifier is a new accessibility service that helps users focus on real-world conversations using only your Android smartphone and a set of headphones. Users can tune to hundreds of personalized levels to optimize their listening experience to the current environment. It's two sliders for loudness and tuning dynamically adjust over 100 audio presets in the background. These settings can be applied independently to each ear. Adjusting them improves the sound quality in an array of situations, including the following. Enhancing sound in loud, distant, or otherwise acoustically challenging situations. Increasing the volume of somebody who speaks so too softly. Turning up the TV volume to one that's acceptable to everybody in the room without blasting everybody else. So now I'm going to go in and talk a little bit about how we built it the APIs and the effect upon which it was built, and I'll do some demos. Sound Amplifier is based on Android P's new dynamics processing effect. The effect is a four-stage signal processing architecture, and I'm going to walk you through each stage, and then Ricardo's going to come in a little bit and really deep dive in, into this and show, show the developers in the audience exactly how they can adapt this to their applications. So first, stage one. Stage one is pre-equalization. You can think of pre-equalization as an equalizer that you can programmatically adjust any audio frequency. Think bass, mid-range, treble, the entire audio spectrum. Stage two is a multiband compressor. The multiband compressor is the heart and soul of the dynamics processing effect. Because what it does is really unique. It can simultaneously adjust down really loud or irritating sounds. Don't worry, I won't make any. Or, and just adjust up 
sounds that are too soft. It could do all of this without changing the characteristics of the underlying audio that you put into the system. The third stage is also an equalization stage. It's post-equalization, allows you to fine tune the output from the original MBC and the original um, pre-equalizer. And lastly is the limiter. What the limiter does is protects, protects users from additional gain or additional volume above a certain developer-designated threshold so that there are no loud, jarring, or uncomfortable uh, no noises. So now I'm going to switch, switch over and do a, do a little demo. So I'm going to play a very typical Google micro kitchen uh, water cooler type of, type of break where there's a loud espresso maker in the background. And I'm, I'm in this. I star in this. Um, Do you really? Wow. Just swung two so you can hear the sound is it, you, you can't really hear the conversation. Interactive with nature. That's always good. So you yeah. could have escaped from Alcatraz. If you had to. I, I swam far enough to escape from Alcatraz. Right? Did you really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, you should have swum to Alcatraz. So I could dynamically adjust it this and start to hear the conversation. Remember, this is customizable or tunable for every user. Doing this again, again, I, I get to star again. I'm really not this into myself. Uh, here's me talking, kind of rehearsing this talk right now. And I'm speaking too quietly. So this will be another example of how I can adjust the sound so that I can hear it better. The other thing that I also forgot to mention was you use this with your headphones. So you can think of what's in the video as you know, what you would be hearing in your headphones. So listening is difficult, even under the best circumstances, in a quiet field with no background noise and a large set of ears. So you can hear the boost. But in noisy conditions, the everyday reality is that we work, play, and live with an increasing amount of environmental noise. So listening is difficult. So it's very easy to fine tune any acoustic situation to the environment, to your, to your ears, and so forth. And Ricardo is going to deep dive in and talk a little, bit about, a little bit more about the dynamics processing effect and how developers can start using this today. Off Thank to you, you Ricardo. Thank you. Well, now we saw the demos, and we saw uh, the, the um, sound amplifier actually working in real life. So we are going to go down and see how the sound amplifier actually works and what is the magic behind it. So for that, I want you to introduce to, introduce to you the hearing threshold. I'm going to be in this slide for a second. I'm going to explain to you what is here. In here, we are seeing what is the average hearing threshold for the average human. The hearing threshold is actually how much energy we need to have to be able to listen to the sound. So in this plot, we can see from left to right, from low frequency to high frequencies, from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And in the vertical axis, we can see the amplitude. We see how much energy we actually will need to hear the sounds. So because this is the threshold of hearing in quiet, this is pretty much telling that anything that is below that threshold will not be heard by people. So for example, if we go and we look into the 4,000 hertz, we see that the threshold is lower in there. That means that we need less energy. We need a lot. The sounds can be fainter. They can be softer. And we will hear them. But if we have a sound that is about the same level in around, I don't know, 100 hertz, you will not be able to hear that. So this is important because many companies use this curves, this kind of threshold, uh, hearing threshold curves to design their equipment. When you are designing, I don't know, MP3 or CD players, it, these curves are present. Or if you are tuning a headsets, speakers, microphones, all of these curves are really important to know what people will actually hear and what they are sensitive to. But these curves can shift. So we can have hearing threshold shifts due to so many circumstances. Let's say it's the noise in the environment. Uh, a minute ago, we have the AC blasting in here, and that was a threshold shift. We needed to have sounds that were way louder over that threshold 
to be able to listen, to hear the sounds. When they see turn off a minute ago as well, we can speak softer and we can we hear that. Our threshold shifted down at that moment. So a threshold shift is a region that will need more energy for you to be able to notice that. We have other shifts. We can have shifts that are not as broadband, not all over the spectrum and the previous one. We can have shifts that are more localized. This blue curve in here is showing us a shift that is around 500 hertz, really, really, really high. There is some noise or some obstruction there that is not going to allow you to hear things very well around 500 hertz. These shifts could be permanent. All, all your life, you're going to have that shift, or could be temporary. As Brian mentioned, could be a temporary situational disability. That means that for that period of time, for, you are not going to be able to hear things around those frequencies because either your headphones are not working well, you are in a noisy environment, your ears are not working well at that moment. Sounds that are below that threshold, that sh shifted threshold, you are not going to be able to hear that. And that's the important takeaway from this. If it's below the threshold, you cannot hear it. So what happens when we have a sound of interest? Let's say that you are listening to music, or someone is speaking, or some sound that interests you. So in the, in the plot, I just put a blob, that's a green blob in there, and it's a broadband sound, has a lot of frequencies, and it has energy all over the place. But if you notice, again, around 500 hertz, a lot of the energy that is below the threshold, the shifted threshold, the blue one, is going to be lost. When you have a sound of interest that is below the threshold, the shifted threshold, eh, it's, it's going to be difficult to be heard, or the, intelli the intelligibility is really bad. You cannot understand the sound. So this is the question that everybody's asking. How can sound amplifier help us right now? So I'm glad that you asked. Sound amplifier is going to take the sounds and is going to actually boost them where you need them the most. If we look again in the, in the range from 500 hertz to 1 kilohertz, we took the sounds, and in this new process sound, we took the sounds that were really soft, that they didn't have that much energy, and we boosted them all the way over the shifted threshold. So now we can hear those. But very important, we took the sounds that were already loud, and we moved them up, but not too much up. So the loud sounds got louder, but not too loud. So if you see this. The, the process that happened, it was not uniform all over the spectrum. It was shifting things and kind of trying to accommodate them over our shifted threshold. So it was doing a very intelligent boost in there. All of this processing is done by the new dynamics processing effect that we introduced in Android, in Android P. And I'm going to talk more. I'm going to show code in a, in a minute, I promise. So the dynamics processing effect. Uh, as Brian mentioned, is the new uh, effect, the processing effect that we have. It has four stages, the pre-EQ, multiband compressor, post-EQ, and limiter. And when we are using this effect, we have two big questions that we need to answer, especially for our sound amplifier. First is, what kind of processing do we actually want to hear sounds, to be able to, depending on the needs that we have, if we are in a loud environment, or we are in a bad connection, or we are in an airport, or depending, what kind of processing we need to make things above the shifted threshold that we have. And the second is how users can actually go and move and find the right parameters that they need for you. So we have two big questions to answer. The first one for the processing, what kind of processing we want, uh, we did what Google is really good at. We took a lot of data and we start crunching that data. So we took data from a hearing thresholds from regular and impa hearing impaired users, so actually how people hear, how, how their ears respond, and we put them in there. We took threshold shifts from different environment places and different environment noises. We went to airports, restaurants, and places where we have noise obstructions, things that are going to shift our threshold of hearing. And we also put them in, in the blender. And uh, we went to a uh, and try to get the audio content from the, the audio content that people actually want to hear. Uh, conversations, movies, music, uh, live concerts, uh, lectures. And we managed to pull all of this together and come up with a set of uh, recipes of uh, parameters that would be good for processing the sound in many situations. When you do that, you end up 
with, I would say, a multidimensional space, a bunch of solutions that are pretty much parameters, very complex parameters, that you want to tell the Dynamics FX processor, oh, for this situation, this will be good to shift the sound. For this situation, will be that. But that's unmanageable. If you want to tell the users, well, start moving parameters like this, will be hundreds of parameters, and it will be very difficult for the users to make something good with this. So we took a further step and did some dim dimensionality reduction. Took all of those recipes, multidimensional space, and flattened them out and plotted them in two dimensions. In here, in the plot in the right, you can see that we see each one of those is kind of a formula or a processing a recipe that we want a, to feed the dynamics processor effect to change the sound. And with the dimensionality reduction, we found two major axes, the tone and the boost. The users, so this solves the second question that we have, how the users are going to navigate this. Well, they don't need to know the, all the parameters that we need. We just give them two sliders, the two sliders that we just saw on the demo. And by moving those sliders, they are actually doing a very intelligent mapping and going and moving a thousand parameters, well, not thousands, hundreds of parameters that are moving for each channel in there. When the user goes and iterate using the sliders, they are actually going through a bunch of uh, recipes, a bunch of uh, processings, and they can find the one that suits them the best at that moment for that user in that location. And that's what we wanted to do. So that was kind of like a bird eye view of how the sound amplifier works. Now we are going to go deeper and start talking about code. What can you do with the dynamics effects, uh, processing effects? So, you can find the dynamic uh, processing effect in, as a new library in the Android Media Audio Effects Dynamics Processing. And right now, so let's start talking about use cases. So when can you use a dynamics processing effect? The first use case we saw at length, you can do a sound amplifier. So if you go today, because this is now available in the Android uh, P developer preview, you can go tonight. I'm sure that everybody is going to skip the party and go and create your own dynamics, your own sound amplifier. So with a sound amplifier, with the dynamics process effect, we are expecting people to create their own sound amplifiers or create their own solutions to uh, be able to hear better, to listen better. Another example, another utility that can happen is a when you have a device, an Android device, and you want to tune the speakers or the headphones, many companies uh, have software that will uh, equalize or do something to the headphones to make them sound uh, flatter, better, to have more bass, something that you want. Now, with this effect, it will be easy for you and for your clients to do that. Another application that is really interesting is the TV midnight mode. If you are watching TV 2 AM, you cannot sleep. But if you start watching a movie, and sometimes you are, someone is whispering in the movie, just saying something really quiet, and immediately, bam, music comes in there. And something really loud, you woke up everybody in the house. With a dynamics process event, you can actually have something that the whisper, the very soft parts of the movie can be raised up, but the very loud music or gunshots or whatever is happening in the movie, it can bring down, and everything is going to a, a more level, a better sound in there, more level sound. Another example can be for media players. You are doing your own media player, and you want to actually uh, do some loudness maximization or mastering. You want, you want to listen to classical music in your media player, and you, and you are in a train. You would like to have the control to be able to, again, squeeze the loud sounds and uh, bring up the soft sounds. So everything is working well for the dynamic range that you have in there. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about architecture, and I promise, code is coming. But I want to show the architecture. We are giving you a lot of power with this effect. So we, the architecture that we showed before, uh, we were kind of lying. It's not as simple. It's a little bit more complex. The architecture, yes, we have four stages. We have a pre-EQ, multiband compressor, post-EQ, and limiter. But we can do more things in there. Inside of each one of those stages, we have a lot of parameters that you can control. We have the bands, and in the pre-EQ, multiband compressor, and post-EQ, we can have as many bands as you want, and you can control each one of those bands and the parameters in those bands. The limiter is a single band limiter, but you can also control that. All of this is, it comes into a channel. So a channel, well, we are defining the channel as, let's say you have a stereo signal. Stereo signal has two channels, left and right. 
So we are going to have channel 0 and channel 1, and you can control all of those independently. Or you can have many more channels. Let's say that you have a 5.1 uh, signal. You actually have six channels that you can control, and you can index all of those channels and say, I want to change the multiband parameter, the, the multiband controller, band number three in the channel two, and I want to change this. We are giving you an API to do all of those things. One thing that I want you to notice is the limiters. The limiters are linked limiters. I'm going to talk more about that, but it's important when you are talking about multi-channel <coughs> to be able to uh, change all the limiters kind of at once if you need to. So now, finally, code. Yes, we promised code. We have some code. So this is an instance, instantiation example of the dynamics processing effect. For this, we decide, because we have so many parameters and so many things that can be configured, to have a config builder. So you create a config builder, and then we are actually going to instantiate the effect. First, with the config builder, in this example, uh, we, we can uh, have some parameters, like the variant, the number of channels. I'm going to talk more about that in a second. Then we can enable or disable each one of the stages. In this example, we have all the stages enabled. Yes, we want to use pre-EQ, multiband compressor, post-EQ, and limiter. And the number of bands. We can say how many bands we want per stage type. So in, I can have all the pre-EQs can have, let's say, eight bands, the multiband compressors, 10 bands, and the post-EQ, 13 bands. The only limitation is like the stage types needs to have the same number of bands. But then you can choose any number of bands that you want. We have some extra parameters, as I mentioned, the variant and the number of channels and the set prefer frame duration uh, that you, you can set in the config builder. Then in the last line, we are actually creating a configuration. We are saying build, and we have a configuration object. Then I, I don't want to use the configuration directly. Sometimes I want to finish the architecture of my effect and go and change the default parameters. So in this example, I'm getting a channel. I'm getting a channel object in the first line from the config. And I'm saying, from channel number 0, in this case, get the multiband compressor. We have the multiband compressor stage. And then I iterate through the eight uh, multiband uh, bands that I have in my multiband compressor. And I went and changed the parameters in each one of them. This is an example for I.O. I'm sure that in real world applications, you can go and do more things. But you see that we can go and set each one of the things that we want, the release, the attack, the ratio, the threshold, the way that you want for each one of the bands. And finally, we go and instantiate the, the dynamics processing effect, my dynamics processing effect. And you can instantiate it with a, a, the config file that we just created and the session ID. That way, you attach this effect to whatever the media player or the audio track that of interest for you. And then you can start just going in your program and controlling everything. I'm going to, instead of going on the API and just showing like, the dry code, I'm going to go a little bit more meta, more conceptual, to show this in graphics a little bit. So in the configuration, or when we are running real time, we can have access to channels that I just showed you. And we have many channels. So the channel object, and we can index the channel by index number. So 0, 1, 2, 3, we can get the channel. Each channel object actually has some parameters, like the input gain, that you can go and change on the channel. Or you have stages. You can access the pre-EQ, multiband compressor, post-EQ, or limiter. And uh, let's say, at this moment in the EQ, you can actually grab the EQ. Both EQs look exactly the same from the API level, from the API viewpoint. And you can go and change the parameters on the EQ or change the parameters in each one of the bands there. Sorry, it's going very deeper. So we can go from, we can go from band to uh, the EQ, from channel, and then the collection of channels. So we have access to all the granularity that we want there. The same thing for the multiband compressor. We can access the multiband compressor inside of the channel and then access uh, the parameters that we have in each one of the bands. And lastly, the limiter. We don't have bands in the limiter, only parameters there. And we can access that. So now I'm going to dive a little bit more on each stage type and what are the, the accessors that we have, the setters and getters that we have there. First, the equalizer. I think that most people are familiar with the equalizer, but what, what an equalizer does, but if not, very quickly, 
with an equalizer, we are going to specify different frequency bands. We are going to have bands from 0 to 500 hertz, 500 to 3,000, 3,000 to 7,000. And we are going to change the energy, the level, or the gain that we have in each one of those bands. We, in here, we can set the bands any way that we want. So we can have many bands, and we can have cutoff frequencies, any cutoff frequency that we want. In this graph, it's kind of misleading, because all of the bands are the same uh, width. That's not true. You can do any width that you want. And once that you set up the bands, you can go, and with the accessors that we have here, we can get the gain, what is the current gain, or we can set the gain. And we can change all of this also real time. We are going to uh, then the multiband compressor. So first a disclaimer, someone was pointing out, you are only showing one band in the multiband compressor. And yes, I'm showing one band, but uh, this, is, this is easy to uh, show what the multiband compressor does. As Brian mentioned, and we have mentioned, uh, when you have a compressor, a multiband compressor, <coughs> the main goal is to take sounds that are really loud and make them softer, and sounds that are very soft and make them louder. The way that we have here represented, we have the same sentence in the before. We have a the sentence that is loud, medium, and soft in the top. And after we apply the processing of the multiband compressor, it's going to look like the after. That is, the loud sound is a little bit softer, the medium one stays medium, and the soft one goes very loud. The way that a multiband compressor works, or the parameters work, uh, bear with me for a second for this graphic, is we have the input, how, what is the level of the, of the signal in the, in the uh, horizontal axis. And the numbers are from minus 100 to 10. Uh, the lower the number, like minus 50, is way softer than uh, minus 10, for example. So minus 10 will be louder, a louder sound. And when the compressor, what it's doing is it's analyzing the input. And if the input is above the threshold, we have a threshold parameter, is going to decide to say, you know, that's too loud. I'm going to bring you down. But if it happens to be below the threshold, it's not touched. So for example, in this graphic, if we choose minus 40, the input was minus 40 level, the output will be exactly minus 40. We are below the threshold. We are not going to modify that signal. But the threshold here is around 25, minus 25. So if I choose a value of minus 20, the actual output will be a, around, a, sorry, let's say, no, let's choose an input of minus 10. Sorry, that's better. Minus 10 as an input will map to a minus 20 to the output. That means that the sound became softer just because it was above the threshold. With all these parameters, with the compression ratio, the threshold, and uh, the gain, and uh, the, gain, the input gain, the output gain, and the other parameters, we are able to do what we have been promising, that we are able to take sounds and make them so uh, louder, but take loud sounds and make them softer. And that's what a multiband compressor is doing. And it's doing this in different bands. We can take regions of frequency from 0 to 1,000 hertz and, they and behave in a different way that the region from 1,000 to 5,000 will behave. We are giving you all that power to control. The multiband compressor being one of the most complex ones, you can get these setters and getters. So we can get the attack time, release time, ratio, all these parameters that you need to actually configure a, a compressor. And uh, you do this per bands. As I, well, there is one thing, and I'm sure that everybody is asking this. Why do you have a pre-gain, a post-gain? your multiband compressor is before and after an equalization. And it's true. They are, doing, they are redundant. They are doing pretty much exactly the same. But we did that for one reason. We talked to a lot of developers and people that actually have a lot of these algorithms in real life. And some camp, some, a, a big portion of them, they really like to have an equalization and then a multiband compressor to do some tuning of their microphones or the speakers. Some of them want, like to have a multiband compressor and then an equalization stage. So the easiest way for us to make this effect very universal was to uh, build in some redundancy and do the API in such a way that they can easily port all their algorithms to this. The last stage is the limiter. The limiter is pretty much the same that the multiband compressor, but it's a single band. So we don't have multiple bands. And what this is doing is pretty much the same. It's taking a sound 
And if it's way too loud, if it's above a certain level in the threshold, it's just going to squash that down. It's very useful, uh, and it's usually found at the end of any audio processing chain, especially to protect the speakers. You don't want that the processing did something funky, and the sound is really loud, and you don't want that loud sound to come out of the speakers. So you go, and the limiter is going to say, OK, sorry, this is too loud. I'm not going to clip, but I'm just going to squash it down so it doesn't destroy the speakers. So the limiter is really good. And I promised to mention something about the link. The limiters are link limiters. And we have the link group. When we have multiple channels, let's say that we have two channels, and we want a, one of the channels, and they are in the same group, and one of the channels, the left channel, something really loud happened in that channel, and it's very, very loud. If we squeeze on down only the left channel, the stereo image will shift all the way to the right, because this, the right one did nothing. But if they are linked, and for some reason one of the channels got a loud sound, both will come down simultaneously, and the stereo signal, the stereo image, it will not move. It will stay in the center, stay where they need it to be. So being able to control the link groups in a stereo signal or in a multi-channel uh, environment, let's say you want to link the stereo speakers, the surround speakers in a different group, so you can keep uh, your uh, spatial image intact. And that was another feature that was asked for us to do. Well, so some more comments about the dynamics processing effect. First one, the real-time controls. All the controls and the API that I tried to summarize in here, but it's very big, I really encourage you to go and read the API and the documentation. All these controls, most of them are real-time controls. You can use them, and once that your effect is running, you can go and change pretty much any parameter that you want. You can change the levels in here. You can change the attack, the release, the ratio, anything that you want in any of the channels, in any of the bands. Uh, you can also use pretty much the same API for instantiation. Sometimes you want to create an effect and have it ready to go immediately. As soon as it starts playing, it's playing with all the parameters. So it will work like that. We also have some implementations. At this moment, we are offering two implementations, uh, two uh, variants that we call a uh, favor frequency and fa favor time. Sometimes for these effects, if you have a frequency domain implementation, it's good because you can have very precise frequency splits in the bands that you may need for your algorithm. And at the same time, we are also giving like the desired frame size a hint that you can give to the audio engine, to the effect engine, to say, well, you know, I like frequency, and I would like to have frames of about 10 milliseconds, 20 milliseconds for your processing. So although it's not a guarantee, you can tell the engine, hey, I would like to do that. Another important thing with this effect is it's built in into AOSP. So all AOSP, Android P, uh, AOSP is shipping with this effect. Uh, but it's an OEM replaceable effect. So if an OEM really wants to come with a snappier effect or a snappier implementation or something, uh, they are encouraged to do that. And if we have OEM people in the audience, please uh, talk to me afterwards. But yes, go ahead and do this. And the only thing is, like, please do very cool effects with this and very good quality effects. The other thing is this effect is available for developers as an insert effect. Uh, you can go and implement it in your application. You have a media player. You have a music application. You just go and use the Android Media Audio Effects Dynamic Processing Effect, and it will be available for you there in the implementation. So summary, today we learned a bunch of things. The first one, we, uh, we introduced the new feature, the sound amplifier. The, so it's uh, the new accessibility feature. It uses only the smartphone and a set of headphones and helps you improve your listening experience. Brian showed you a couple of very cool demos. And, um, and thank you for the sound people that they turn off the AC at that moment so we could hear things a little bit better. Um, we learned about the hearing threshold and the hearing threshold shifts and how they power the way that the sound amplifier works. And the last thing, uh, we show the dynamics processing effect the code, how the stages work, and how can you go and create your own dynamics processing effect to embed in your own applications. So with that, we want to give thanks to a lot of people that were involved in this project, uh, Brian's team, uh, the Android accessibility team, my team, the Android Media Framework team, the research team at Google, the sound understanding team, uh, the, our team in Taipei that they uh, helped implement the applications that you saw today, 
And uh, I want to thank you for staying so late, the last day of I.O. And uh, please contact us if you have any questions. Thank you.